twopeasinabucket.com and I'm here with the November edition of 4x6 Photo Love. It's the 11th month of the year so that means you're going to scrapbook 11 4x6 photos on one layout and this month it's a two page spread and a little bit more. I'm going to show you this month's page in the album because it's a little bit easier that way. So what we're doing is making a double page spread so two 12 by 12s and then a 6 by 12 page in the center which holds four photos and two four by six journaling cards. So I've used a, a row of four photos all the way across, three portrait photos above that, and then the four more landscape photos for a total of 11. But there is a little bit of flexibility because you could add more journaling cards or fewer card, journaling cards and more photos. And I have a special guest this month who's also going to show you a way to make this with all landscape photos, 11 landscape shots, in case you have um, a big stack all from one event that are all in the same direction. So I'm going to walk you through a second version of this layout using the same design principles but different colors and different supplies. And if you want to grab 11 4x6 prints, I'd love for you to join me and scrap along with me. Here's a closer look at the first layout. So there are three photos on the first page of the double page spread, two photos here on the 6x12 plus a journaling block, two more photos on the back and another journaling block, and then the remaining four photos here to include 11 4x6 prints across the two pages. So we're going to try this same idea but with a different set of photos and a different set of supplies. So in this one I used um, pinks and greens and I used some basic gray Piccadilly the um, Autumn Press line from Studio Calico. Um, and this pink is from Studio Calico as well. And then stickers are from Bella Boulevard and October Afternoon. Okay, have a look at the supplies that I pulled out for the second page. And this time I'm going to be working on a craft background and I've pulled out these three single color patterns, so one in green, one in yellow, and one in a blue turquoise. Um, these two are from October Afternoon, and this one is Studio Calico. And then I've pulled out both the blue and the uh, brown labels from Studio Calico. I'm not sure if I'll use just one color or both. And also these smaller labels from Lost and Found 2 by My Mind's Eye, and the matching brads that go with that set. And for lettering, I've pulled out brown, that's the Hello by Amy Tangerine for American Crafts, and the, these are the slate letters for Sassafras. Then, last thing I'll need is a 6x12 page protector, and this comes divided already. This is by American Crafts, and they call this a photo protector, and so it's three pockets, so you can have six, um, uh, six pieces, and um, if you don't have one of these, you can sew your own. Just take a 12 by 12, cut it down to 6 by 12 and sew off that side, and then sew two pockets and cut along the edge. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but if that um, puts an idea in your mind, it certainly can be done. Or you can get these in a pack of 10. Okay, and I have the same uh, with my prints. I have three in portrait and all the rest in landscape. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to take my 12 by 12s and lay them side by side. And then I'm going to start with the photographs. And I've already decided which ones are going on in the, in the middle section. So I'm going to start with the 12 by 12 and then I'll work on the 6 by 12 once I have all these photos in place. So this row is nice and easy. I just need to have one flush with the edge and then I'll line up the rest and put them all the way across. go. 
and that leaves me three that will go at the top. And two sets of two to go in the divided page protector. Before I add any more photos, I'm going to add a border that goes all the way across the bottom. And this color is going to repeat above the photos with the title here. And it's also then going to be the accent color in the middle section of the 6x12. So if you have label stickers and pattern paper that match, choose that pattern paper for this border. So I have the turquoise label stickers that match this, so I'm going to use this as that border piece. And I'm just going to punch two strips to go all the way across the page. And for this I'm using the, oops, the EK Success Border Punch, and this is the postage stamp design. The punched strips go straight below the photos, and then you want two 1x12 strips of another pattern paper to go above the pictures, and that's just a plain box, and then it gets stuck straight to the background. I'm inking all of the edges with Vintage Photo Distress Ink, which is a brown color. You can ink all the edges or none of the edges, whatever you like. With strips in place below and above the photos, you're going to go to the third pattern paper, and I've cut two 5 by 12 strips, and I won't need quite this much. But what I want to do is be able to make something that's longer than 12 inches. So I need uh, multiple pieces, and I also want to be able to match up the pattern if possible. So, um, let's see if either of those match up nicely. Not really. If they don't match up, then we can it, it, it's quite easy to hide it just by placing another element on the join. Okay, so what I want to do then is I'll ink the outside of this, but um, not worry about the side edge here. some space here and I want to overlap this but not cover it all up. So I'll lay that flat. I'll add some extra glue so it's stuck along that edge. And then I'll turn this over and cut off the excess. Now I can go to the other side get the closest match possible. This one's a little bit better match. And figure out roughly where I want this piece to end. I kind of want it around the middle of the page so I'm going to go around here. I'm just going to make a mark and then cut that on my paper trimmer. Make sure the two pages are nice and straight. On top of that, I've added a 12 inch strip that's just about three or four inches tall, and it's the, the width of the pattern paper, and I've just attached one side, cut off the extra, and attached the other to the other side. Now, on a normal 12 by 12 layout, it would be quite obvious if this wasn't lined up perfectly or that this pattern wasn't lined up perfectly, but because the 6x12 will be in the middle, it's a bit more forgiving. So if you normally don't try this technique, this is a good project to try it. But you don't want to have any photos go over the gap because there'll be a page in the center. So it's good to try with, with your papers, but I give it a miss with photos this time. To finish the basic design of the double page spread, you then need three photos here across the top. If you have landscapes, you can build them across here in the same sort of fashion, just not a complete row like below. But if you have portraits, they'll fit um, nice and easily. And then you've got this space here for your title. 
and I've used um, a label and two different sizes of letter sticker. Now I'm going to come back and add more embellishment to this once I create the page in the middle, but if you prefer a nice simple style, you can leave it nice and plain like this. So let's have a look at the 6x12 that's going to go in the center and see how that works so that we can set this aside for just a minute. And now it's this page protector that I'm going to work with. And what I tend to do is work out which picture I want in which place. So this will be one side and this will be another. And then I need to cut the square or the rectangles for the journaling space here in the middle. And you can choose any of the pattern papers. I'm going to use the yellow that went through the middle of the layout. I just want to cut two boxes that will be the same as the photo, so four by six inches. Once I know what's going to go in each window, then I start to look for what elements I'm going to add on top. And I've got a lot of labels in different sizes and also the brads. And I'll add things to the journaling box, obviously, but also to the photos. And what I like to look for is elements of the photo that it doesn't change the meaning of the picture if I cover it up. So for example, in this photo, it's not perfect and I cut this little bit of the car roof. If I cover that up, it's not going to destroy the meaning of the picture. And likewise, this one has a lot of space here in the concrete because I caught this picture just, um, I actually had my camera on my hip and just took it while this little boy was jumping up and down on the street. And so it's not a perfectly composed shot and there's a lot of empty space here at the bottom. I can add stickers or embellishments to the bottom here and not um, lose the meaning of the picture. Likewise, I could add to the top up here. This one is a lot busier and I don't particularly want to lose any of the photograph. So what I tend to do is take my stickers and cut them apart and then I can move them around and see where they'll go best without having to stick them to the photo because then once they're stuck, they're not going to come back up. Here's what everything will look like once I have figured out kind of a rough plan of where everything is going to go. So this way nothing's stuck and I can figure out where the color is going to kind of bounce back and forth. So the brown and the turquoise and then the green all kind of intermix and I like to kind of alternate so you can see there's pearl brads here on this side are going to be top and bottom but the bigger brad on the other side will be in the middle piece and just try and add some balance. Once I have a rough plan like that, I just start cut, I start going ahead and, and peeling things off and sticking them down until all of these pieces are embellished as much as I want and I add all the journaling at this point too. Once I've added the bits and pieces to the photos and the journaling cards, I'll go ahead and slip that into the page protector and that's that piece done. So then I can put that in between the two 12 by 12s and start to see good places for embellishment. So I have a lot of empty space up here and I can add some embellishment here. And then I tend to like to put things on an angle so diagonal from that would mean this bottom corner over here. So just turn this over to, to double check and yep that would still work because there'd be embellishment here kind of in a diagonal line to here and here. So that works well with the flow of the page and it also means that I have room for more journaling here because of the 11 photos there's a lot going on and lots of bits and pieces that I want to get written down. So I'll look for some matching embellishments to add a cluster of embellishments up here in the top corner and one in the bottom corner here. Here's the finished layout. I've added the embellishments to the top and bottom corners and then added journaling to both of those. And I'll put both of these in normal 12x12 page protectors. This will go in the middle. And there I have 11 4x6 prints on one, essentially one layout. And maybe it's cheating. I don't think it's cheating. I think it's 11 photos in my album all together all on a, a, a related theme. So this is a great technique if you have plenty of photos from one event. So here's a last look at this version with a craft background, blue, green, and yellow papers from October Afternoon at Studio Calico. And then this version in pinks and greens 
from Basic Gray and Studio Calico again. Now, there is one month to enter this challenge, so create a page with 11 4x6 prints following this design concept. You can reinterpret it as you want, as long as it's obvious that you have taken this idea and made it your own. Or you can copy it exactly as it is, that's fine too. And um, you have a month to upload it to Two Peas in a Bucket for a chance to win a gift certificate. So I would love for you to try this and upload your project so we can all see. Thanks for joining me this month, and I'll be back next time.